English Movie Explainer. Please like, subscribe and share. May Angela Bettis is an abnormal, desolate young lady who had a disturbed youth because of her sluggish act which made her vibe unusual and awkward. As a young lady, May's mom takes her to an eye specialist, who recommends that might wear an eye fix to address her vision. Tragically, this just urges different youngsters to take a gander at her, most remarkably on their most memorable day of school, when one of her kindred understudies inquires as to whether she is a privateer. She has not many long friendly cooperations with individuals all through her existence with her as it were a valid companion, being a glass-encased doll named Susie made by her mom and given to May for her birthday. Subsequent to giving her the gift, her mom tells her, on the off chance that you can't track down a companion, make one. As a grown-up, May works at a veterinary emergency clinic helping with medical procedures in a lower-class part of Los Angeles. May's optometrist fixes her lethargic eye, first with eyeglasses, then, at that point, with an extraordinary type of contact focal point. As May endeavors to interface with individuals around her, she sees Adam, Jeremy Sisto, a neighborhood repairman, in and out of town and starts to follow him. She times her visits to the neighborhood laundromat and her midday breaks with his to get together with him so she can watch him. The apparently wonderful person, Adam becomes acquainted with May when she at last figures out how to get the mental fortitude to stroll up and acquaint herself with him, and when she lets him know that she's strange, he answers, that is not a problem. I like unusual. May has an obsession with his hands, which she views as the most appealing piece of him, and Adam appears to see as her appealing too. They begin dating and Adam instructs May to smoke cigarettes, prodding her when he understands she has never smoked. He gives her his bunch of his cigarettes and tells her to rehearse. Simultaneously, May's lesbian partner Polly, Anna Ferris, who fills in as the secretary at the vet center, starts to show a fascination with May, while simultaneously making fun of her for her strangeness. One day while May is feeling particularly low, she offers an irregular comment that Polly has a wonderful neck. Polly then gives her pet feline Loopy to May, apparently due to her bitch property manager's new guidelines not to have pets around. At some point, Adam shows her a film he made for his college named Jack and Jill. The highly contrasting quiet film uncovers an account of two youthful sweethearts who go on an outing and wind up eating one another. May turns out to be plainly stimulated by the obtrusive barbarianism in the film and, during which began as an extreme meeting of making out, goes overboard and nibbles Adam on the lip, making him drain lavishly. At the point when Adam responds in torment and asks her for a towel, May appears to like seeing his blood on her, saying it resembles his film and doesn't perceive how frightened he is. Adam is at last upset by May's weird character and leaves. May feels remorseful and faults her doll Susie who terrified Adam after survey her, for empowering her to go with awful decisions. She yells at her and pushes her in the pantry. After Adam quits calling her, weirded out on the grounds that she drew blood while they were kissing, May goes to his home and incidentally hears him and a companion calling her a neurotic and saying he's happy he could dispose of her. Sorrowful, May returns home and receives a message from Polly welcoming her over. At about this time, May at last yields to Polly's wiles and starts a heartfelt undertaking with her. May then asks about working at a school for crippled kids, explicitly for taking care of the visually impaired youngsters she saw playing in the recreation area close to her work environment. She is particularly keen on a desolate young lady named Petey, who she believes she can relate to. The young lady likewise likes May so she gives her an ashtray made of earth with May's name cut into its focal point. Sometime thereafter, May is at the laundromat and happily welcomes Adam who comes in startlingly, letting him know she's making new companions and showing him Polly's kitty Loopy, who she acquired her clothing crate. Adam is pleasant yet repressed, and tells her his machine is broken and he'll need to go to another laundromat. After he leaves, saying he'll see her around, May heads toward his broken machine and attempts it, understanding after it works fine that he simply didn't have any desire to converse with her. The next day, May goes to see Polly, just to track down that she's with another young lady. Polly makes it clear she's still intrigued by May, however evidently needs to see different young ladies as well. Getting back subsequent to attempting to cover her hurt, May's absolutely hopeless and when Loopy will not approach her, she becomes irritated and tosses the earth ashtray at the feline, striking her on the head and killing her. Over the long run, May additionally secludes herself in her condo turning out to be increasingly whimsical, imagining that her doll Susie is conversing with her through a progression of snaps from her glass case, shades of shock. 
Before long, May attempts to telephone Adam, and he says he can't see her that evening and tells her not to stand by when she offers to. During the discussion, Susie's case is shown breaking and May behaves like she can hear Susie intruding on her telephone discussion. May feels that this in some way means that Susie is desirous of Adam and doesn't need May to be close to him. Relatively soon, she excuses Susie and concludes that she's likely her main genuine companion. Afterward, she goes to the school for blind children and shows them Susie, letting them know that that is her closest companion. The youngsters can't see it, so they need to contact it. May attempts to fend the doll off, as Susie is fragile, and battles with the children until the doll falls and the glass case breaks into pieces generally around the floor. The kids start to slither about searching for the doll, and the glass cuts into their hands and knees. May likewise gets down on the floor to safeguard Susie, cutting herself simultaneously. She is canvassed in her blood, yet the blood of the kids also. Conveying the now annihilated, blood-shrouded Susie, May gets back. She is crushed at everything that have happened to her. She even scratches her disturbed eyes, and afterward nods off on her sofa with the remaining parts of the doll around her. She awakens to a telephone message from Polly, saying she's stressed regarding May in light of the fact that she hasn't appeared working. When May searches in the mirror, she sees her eyes are ridiculous and starts wearing her glasses rather than contacts again while they mend. The next day, May is perched on a seat at a neighborhood transport stop when a troublemaker kid named Clear, James Duvall, sits other than her and starts conversing with her. He becomes keen on her odd comments about individuals not being totally awesome but rather just having great parts. May could do without him from the get-go, however at that point warms to him when he says he simply needs to be cordial and lets him know she prefers the tattoo he has on his arm. They go to May's loft and Clear starts playing with her. At the point when he goes to the cooler to get ice, he finds the feline's body enclosed by saran wrap. Floored, he starts to frenzy and calls May an oddity, enraging her, she at last separates and cuts him in the head with some scissors. May is shown thereafter with swipes of Clear's blood on her and is smoothly smoking a cigarette while she went after him. Abruptly, she understands that individuals she had known as her companions were not companions by any means, there were just pieces of them that she considered companions. She essentially reaches the determination that an ideal companion must be made of the relative multitude of ideal pieces of individuals she believed were her companions. On Halloween night, May spruces up in a custom-made ensemble like Susie's dress, alongside fixing her hair as well as putting on white facial powder, making her face pale white, as well as crimson lipstick. She leases a huge ice cooler connected to a cart, and goes out. May first heads toward Polly's home. At Polly's home, May and Polly carry on an ordinary discussion about work until May takes out two or three surgical tools that she took from the Creature Emergency Clinic and places them in each side of Polly's neck. Polly snickers at her, thinking this is a joke and expressing that she realizes that May could never hurt her until May out of nowhere slices her neck, much to Polly's shock prior to kicking the bucket. Somewhat later, Ambrosia, Polly's other sweetheart, shows up at the house, disturbed at May's presence. May appreciates her legs and requests that she pivot for her. Ambrosia acknowledges, yet not without calling her an oddity and offering disparaging remarks about her and Polly's past relationship. After this, May wounds her on the two sides of her head. Ultimately, May goes to Adam's home. At the point when she shows up there, she observes that Adam is with another young lady called Circle, for her loop hoops, who lets Mike come in, causing Adam a deep sense of irritation. They find a seat at the table, and May requests that Adam contact her face. Adam declines, something which leads into a conversation among May and Loop, who tells her that Adam's hands are hers now. Adam, who's a little hungover and not feeling good, gets eager with the two ladies and says he needs May to leave, after which she stands and asks him again to contact her face. He resentfully jabs May's brow, so, all in all May wounds Loop in the neck. Adam strolls back and shouts with sickening apprehension, yet May cuts him in the stomach. Back at home, May begins planning her new companion, which is fundamentally a Frankenstein-like thing produced using her departed companions whose body parts she keeps in the cooler she's hauling near. She utilizes Clear's arms, Polly's neck, Adam's hands, Ambrosia's legs, Ban's studs, still on her cut-off ears, and Loopy's fur, to substitute hair. The head and middle are essentially various pieces of texture sewed together and stuffed, while different members are at long last sewn together. 
Mei then changes out of her Susie ensemble, washes herself off, and returns to her old youngster-like character. Once the gas lead body, named Amy, taken from the letters in Mei's name, which was composed on the now-annihilated ashtray, is done, she understands that Amy can't really see her. Thus, in a hurry of wretchedness, she wounds her right eye, the languid one, with the scissors. Crying in torment, she puts it on the head of Amy and sobbingly asks for what to check her out. Exasperated and in torment, May rests her head up against Amy's shoulder. In her agony and mental implosion, May sees her companion unexpectedly become completely awake and contact her face affectionately, with Adam's prized hands. May grins, 